Good morning, folks. We're going to do a little live style at spaceweathernews.com. Come through and take a look at how you actually look at the sun to see what's going on. First thing you see when you scroll down is over on the left, in gold, we have 193 angstroms, and on the right, we have the chromosphere and 304 angstroms. You don't see any solar flares. You barely see any sunspots. Over here you can see the last one departing and you're going to see an incoming one at the eastern limb over here in 193 angstroms. That's the bright region. It'll be seeing us in a few days here. Now shifting over, you can see we also have a plasma filament to the north of that, but really there's not much going on in terms of solar flare or CME activity. We've just got a very large coronal hole facing Earth. Coming down a little bit, these two are the X-ray flux. When the sun makes a solar flare, it does so in X-rays. You can see we are flatlined. It is sunspot minimum. We don't have any sunspots, and there are no solar flares. Coming to the solar wind next, this is the Discover Craft, and this is ACE. These little spikes right here are those erroneous readings that we've been talking about for a long time. You can see they are not, truly, uh, not really corroborated at all here on the ACE telemetry. And so we can see that solar wind is very calm as well. Uh, looking up here at the red line, the BZ, you can see the closest that is to the zero, the baseline, uh, the weaker we really are. When you start seeing spikes swinging up to 10, 15, 20, then we're getting geomagnetic uh, conditions disturbed. But as you can see on the nice curve on the magnetometer and on the low KP index, everything, uh, everything is quiet. Uh, we have a nice calm looking curve here on the electron flux as well. Do also want to mention 5.0 in Hawaii. That's definitely the most relevant quake of the day. Lava has reached the surface, by the way, and evacuations are in order, about 10 to 15,000 people so far. Coming over to windy.com, we're going to do this quickly for the United States, and hopefully you can apply this wherever you live in the world. What's catching my eye is the low pressure there and the convergence line. You've got air coming out of the west and out of the north, and it's coming up here out of the south. These two air masses have very different moisture, temperature, pressure, and electric potentials, and they've all got to equalize along that line. It's that changing of the material, a uh, changing of the characteristics that releases the energy, and we're going to watch what's happening over the next, uh, next 12 to 16 hours here so we can see where uh, where those bad storms are going to be tonight. You know what, let's actually let it run into Saturday as well so we can see that develop towards the Midwest and then up again into Pennsylvania. In a few hours today, we'll have a little bit of a deeper look on some interesting news articles, including this electric earth graphic from NASA, a fascinating way to potentially predict large earthquakes, and we'll leave you with this right here. One of the last things Rossi did before it re-entered the atmosphere on April 30th was detect the heartbeat of an active galactic nucleus. I'll see you in a few hours for the science news, and I'll see you in the morning tomorrow for your regular program. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.